Cup tie against Watford. And 20-year-old Hammond, formerly with Arsenal and Rovers, was at fault with that miscued clearance. And with his defenders not reacting to the crisis, Tony Agana was away to give Watford a second-minute lead. Swindon's defence continued to struggle against the first division side. Malcolm Allen nearly making it 2-0 there. But Steve White was to reply for Swindon, but found Tony Coton too good a goalkeeper. Swindon were to equalise when Dave Bamber's run found the referee deciding on this tackle there that that was a foul and not a fair tackle. Penalty it was, and uh, Jimmy Quinn underlined his continuing excellence this season with the penalty assignment. No nerves, just one look and bang, one side of the net. Nice and firm, one all. Next, the busy Steve Foley broke through for Swindon, but his finishing was awry. In the second half, it was Trevor Senior, the £300,000 Watford striker, giving the Swindon crowd a scare with that shot close. Swindon came back and Bamba showed he could get into positions but couldn't find the right finishing. And the same applied to Steve White, who allowed Tony Coton to save. Finally, Senior was to miss for Watford, who now stage a replay next Tuesday for the place in round four away against Manchester City. Finally, Lou Macari said afterwards he had sensed complacency in the Swindon camp. The Swindon side were not at their best. I felt that myself before the game, that there wasn't the, the normal drive, even in, in the dressing room, um, that, that they had a mountain to climb. And when you're playing... If they can overcome First Division Watford in the third round replay next Tuesday. Last night's match was a tough game, which Swindon could so easily have won, but was most memorable for the debut of 20-year-old Nicky Hammond in the cauldron of cup football. David Passmore reports. The game was barely two minutes old when the nightmare began for 20-year-old Nicky Hammond, making his debut in place of the injured Fraser Digby. His first touch of the ball, a miskicked clearance and a gift for Tony Agana. Two minutes later and Swindon were reeling as Malcolm Allen latched on to a cross from Glyn Hodges. But Swindon came back and after 20 minutes, Dave Bamber's footwork proved too frustrating for the Watford defence. Jimmy Quinn, recalled to the side after missing Saturday's match against Crystal Palace, steps up to take the kick. And just before half-time, Lee Barnard should have made certain when he beat the offside trap. In the second half, Swindon continued to press, but failed to finish. Throughout the 90 minutes, Swindon never looked outclassed by the First Division side, and in the dying minutes, Nicky Hammond made amends for that earlier mistake, denying substitute Gary Porter, and redeeming himself in the eyes of Lou Macari. Well, he's probably told you all week that he was very confident about playing. Um, by nature, he isn't a confident lad, but uh, he came out two or three times at the end, very sharply off his line, and uh, he earned his wages, let's say. Let's will leave it at that. <laughs> will he be in the side again on Saturday? Oh, he'll be in the side on Saturday. We've got, you know, we've got to give him an, an opportunity. We can't have a, have a reserve goalkeeper. Uh...